The World Wide Web, a global resource which enables fast communication and a general knowledge database where anything imaginable can be researched. The internet is now a necessity. IT skills are now part of a national curriculum and online spending and saving is becoming habitual with a BBC online poll showing that 52% of internet users use online banking. But the internet can do other things, life-changing things. It can bring people together. According to the same poll, 18% of people who use the web have friends that they have made online. Online dating isn't new, but it's fast becoming one of the easiest ways to meet new people, and according to research at Bath University, it's the best. Dating websites such as Match.com and DatingDirect.com offer services that can help people make new friends and potentially lovers. But it's not just specific dating sites that offer this. Social networking sites such as MySpace Facebook and Bebo have millions of subscribers worldwide and are used to build or build on relationships. In his report, psychologist Jeff Gavin, who conducted the study at Bath University, said that male website customers had found a new way to express their feelings which did not normally exist. The Oscar Wilde quote, give a man a mask and he'll give you the real him, rings true. So, gone are the days where couples caught offline? Mark Lawton from Match.com believes so and thinks chatting online is no stranger than meeting someone in a pub and told me that the positives of dating online are numerous. Online dating is uh, fantastic for people who have a busy lifestyle, perhaps don't have much time on their hands. It's also good for people who who are wanting to meet like-minded people because one of the advantages is you you can find people who have similar interests, similar hobbies. It It just saves people a lot of time. Also, it, it works very well as social networking. People who struggle to meet people, it, it's, it's essentially, in some ways, it's the same as going down to the pub and meeting friends and meeting their friends because of the way that the system works. You, you'll end up finding that you'll meet so much more people. It, it really is a, a fantastic way of building up networks and meeting people you would never have otherwise met. He also said that it's accessible for anyone of any age and in any situation. A, a lot of people as well who have struggled to... Uh, meet people, um, people, single mums, for example, people who are um, away from home a lot. They they find that internet dating suits them because they can find people who are extremely like-minded. And yeah, we've had a lot of people who have actually started using internet dating and straight away have found results. Whereas in the years previous to that, they um, hadn't had much luck at all. So, what about the successes of online dating? Well, Colette Elson was a student from Berry. She was fed up of meeting and dating people in clubs, so one night she went onto an internet chat room. There, she spoke to Jamie Fletcher, a Canadian student who had been on a night out and had come back early to use the internet to speak to one of his friends who was holidaying in Europe. After a series of meetings online spanning six months, Colette took a holiday to Toronto to meet her online friend. That holiday, which was supposed to last two weeks, lasted six and following several visits to England, Jamie moved to Lancashire with Colette in 2005. In October 2006, they were engaged, and on December 23, 2007, they married. I spoke to Jamie and asked him about his initial chat with Colette. Well, I, uh, I, I met Colette on the internet. I was, uh, well, to be honest, I had been uh, drinking a little bit that day, and uh, I went online, and... I saw this girl with with an interesting name. I think it was uh, Colette with pics. Obviously, I found that quite uh, interesting because I had been drinking and I wanted to see a girl's pictures. Um, so I said hi to her, and uh, she thought I was interesting. I must have said something interesting when I said hi to her. Honestly, I don't remember what it was because I was kind of drunk. But um, we talked for a while that day, and I, I did get beyond the just wanting to see her pictures because I actually did enjoy talking to her, and I found that uh, afterwards I missed her. So we talked for a while, and um, we ended up... I didn't actually get to see her pictures that day, but um, we ended up seeing each other on MSN a couple of days later, and uh, I was uh, quite impressed with what I saw. I I remember um, when she turned on the webcam, I saw her face, and I thought, wow, she's hot. And uh, I could tell she was a little bit confident about, uh, about how she looked because she said... 
I'll get up and walk around so you can see the body. <laughs> so she got up and walked around her kitchen and I was quite impressed with the body. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, well, that was how we met and probably a little more information than you needed. But uh, that was how we met, yeah. Colette's experience was a little bit different. Well, I met Jamie online and we started talking on a chat room. And at first I thought um, he was a really ugly fat guy. Um, Because we started talking, um, I was talking to two guys at the same time. One of them sent me a picture. He was a really fat guy wearing a baseball cap eating a a pot noodle. I thought this was Jamie. Um, We carried on talking for two weeks. I thought he's a nice guy, but obviously he's fat and ugly. Um, When I eventually saw him on webcam, I was pleasantly surprised and uh, obviously decided to fly out and meet him. The couple were both understandably thankful for the internet and Jamie advised people to seriously think about using it if they too find it difficult to approach people in real life. Well, to be honest, I'm not the kind of guy who goes out to clubs and and can meet girls in person. I, um, I tried that for a while and it's just not me. I don't know if if I'm ugly or I just can't talk to girls, um, but it it was never really successful for me. But when I had the the opportunity to pull myself away from the situation and just speak to someone online, I found I could be myself a lot more. And um, I guess that's something that that uh, women respond to a little bit more, just um, being myself instead of being really nervous and fidgety like I, I can get when I'm nervous. I guess if, if the worst were to happen and, and I had to start all over again, yeah, I'd probably be an, an, an internet guy, but uh, I have my wonderful wife now, so I, I don't have to worry about that. Boyd from my meeting with Jamie and Colette, I went to Internet Cyber Cafe in Blackburn and asked the people there whether they would consider online dating. On the internet, you can you feel like you really can get to know someone but I guess you really never know that person until you meet them. So I guess it's quite a scary prospect, really. Um, I can't say I never would because I have done once when I was a lot younger, but I don't think I'd ever do it again because I think people can say a lot of things on the internet that aren't true and you can be very, very misled. I suppose there's people who find it hard to speak to other people themselves and when they get online, because they're behind the computer, they can really express themselves. There's no difference in online dating or going to like a singles bar or anything like that. It depends what they seem like online. If they're from around mine, I might do, but other than that, I don't think so. If they were coming up here to see me, I might do, but I'm not going to go down there to see them. What I couldn't bear about it is the constant reject- rejection, it's just, it's especially this kind of pick and mix idea that you have on the internet where you get to look at a picture, see a, a brief kind of portfolio of that person. I couldn't stand that sort of the 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 speed the speediness of of which people just sort of browse through the catalog of people. This mix of emotions was apparent, with people seemingly embarrassed to talk about the subject. When I asked a friend of mine to talk to me about his experience online, he refused. He was worried it'd appear odd or geeky, and with the web still a relatively new medium and on a computer, there is this stigma. But that, of course, is the least worrying negative of online dating. A BBC study claimed that 91% of online conversations are not conducted with a webcam. This means the person at the other end of the computer could be anyone, and it's understandable why someone would be sceptical of meeting up or continuing a serious relationship offline. Chris Rainford from GetSafeOnline.org, a government-accredited website dealing with internet safety, says that people should think more before they use the internet for online chatting. Um, there's more chances, not just for adults, but also for children as well, to get caught up in something particularly unsavoury. There's, there's sort of, there's no legislation sort of governing the internet, as it were. You know, at the end of the day, your safety online is entirely in your own hands. And if you, if you're not going to be, if you're going to be irresponsible with yourself online, then you're putting yourself in a lot of danger. There have been many disasters online. Cases where children have been groomed online by paedophiles are all too common. This makes the internet for an inexperienced user a very dangerous place. In October last year, 13-year-old Megan Meyer from St. Louis ended her own life after she was bullied on social networking site MySpace. 
She suffered from depression and attention deficit disorder and before her death had made a friend online called Josh. Josh was new to the area and, at first, became very friendly with Megan. But after a few months of talking, he started to insult her and on October the 16th, 2007, he said that the world would be a better place without her in it. It was after reading this final message that Megan went to her room and hanged herself. Days after her death, it was revealed that Josh wasn't a real person. The profile of Josh had been made up by former friends of Megan's and was even being monitored by one child's parent. The parents of Megan are still seeking legal action. I asked MySpace for a comment on this, but did not receive a reply. The story of the married Bosnian couple also highlights problems with the internet. Sarna and former husband Adnan Klaric filed for divorce after they discovered they were secretly chatting to each other online under different names. The couple were tired of their marriage and both made a portfolio of themselves on a Bosnian dating website. They chatted over the web under pseudonyms for six months, both telling of how fed up they were of married life. They agreed to meet up and when they did, chaos ensued, ending in both accusing each other of being unfaithful. To make a fake profile seemed worryingly easy, so I decided to see just how quick and easy it was to make up a new identity on the internet. Um, I'm at home now, and I'm going to try and make a fake profile on Facebook. So you click on sign up. I've got to type my name in. Um, who should I be? I'll be Sarah Clinton. There we go, that's a good name. Birthday. So here, I can pretty much say that I'm born on any date, so I can say that I'm any age. I mean, there's no age verification on this uh, site. Um, but it is it is quite incredible that you can actually create a new identity, as I'm doing right now, um, at just a few clicks. And even put a photograph of anyone that you, f you find and put that as you. So I'll do that right now. And there we go, my profile. I mean, it's incredible how I've I've been able to create, you know, a different kind of um, personality, different person, in what, little under two minutes? Yes, it gives you scope to be adventurous, personalising your own space, but surely that's a danger. From seeing how easy this is, and it, it does make you query about, you know, some of the people you, you speak to um, on these websites, I mean... You really don't know who anyone is, which is quite frightening, really. So, what can you do to protect yourself online? According to the relationshipgym.com, to stand a good chance of meeting someone genuine online, you should follow these three tips. Join a paid dating website service. This will sort out those who are serious about dating and those who aren't. Join a site which is fitted to your personality. There are Christian dating sites now, gym sites, music sites. The more personal your site is to you, then there stands a better chance of meeting someone similar in that site. Finally, only reply to those who have a genuine profile picture and page. If they are anonymous, then there is probably a reason for that and it's best to stay away. If you do choose to meet up with someone you have met online, then it's common sense to meet in a populated public place. It's also advisable to tell a friend or family member who you are meeting, where you are going and when you will be back. So, what is the future for online dating? Even on new PlayStation 3 game Grand Theft Auto 4, online dating is an option for your in-game character. We've got to face it, the internet in general is a cash cow. And dating websites are keen to cash in. More dating sites will be set up in the future and you can see why. It's been a success. Whether social networking sites are just another social trend is debatable, but more and more people are using them for meeting new people. If you're using the internet for dating, be sure to look after yourself. And if the right person is out there, then the internet can help. We only need to look at Jamie and Colette Fletcher to see that it can work.